Hi, I'm Corey Williams from Daydream Studios, and this is a behind the scenes look at my latest short film made in Unreal Engine 5 called Big Hurt. Big Hurt is about a man who essentially captures Bigfoot, but not because he's looking for money or fame and he didn't kill Bigfoot, something really bad happened and he just wants to have some words with Bigfoot. I'm not gonna go into anything because I don't want to spoil anything, uh, but it is a really deep story. This entire thing was created for the 48 hour film project out of Oklahoma City, meaning this entire film from start to finish was created in 48 hours and I did this on my own. So the reason that I'm making this video today, this behind the scenes look, is not necessarily to educate you on exactly how I did it, although there are going to be lots of things in here to help you understand my pipeline for those of you who wanna do this as well. Uh, but more so, I want to just educate people on this new method of storytelling that really opens up the world for creative people, for, for storytellers. And um, I, I'm really hoping that this, what I'm making here, can inspire more people to try this. Rather than teaching you how, I want to give you a why, a reason why you should explore this really great method of storytelling. So um, let me tell you about the 48 Hour Film Festival. It starts at about 6.30, 7 o'clock PM on Friday. You don't know what genre you're gonna have. You don't know who the character is or what the, the character's occupation is. Uh, you don't know what line they're supposed to say because all of these are required. They give you one thing for each thing. You don't know the required prop and I feel like there was like one more thing. Um, but all of these things are required to be in your short film. It isn't until 7 p.m that you get to find out what your genre is going to be. So my wife was in Oklahoma City. Uh, I stayed here in Tulsa, Oklahoma, where my studio is downtown. Uh, and she pulled a little piece of paper from a hat, which essentially had the genre. And when she pulled it, well, we found out. Let me, let me show you that actual moment because I documented this entire process while I was doing it. All right, here we go. It has begun. It is Friday, October 13th at 6 p.m. And my wife just sent me the category, the, uh, the genre for my 48-hour short film. And it is drama or food film, which I'm really excited about because I love great narrative pieces. Uh, I'm not going to do food film because it's, I, it would just be too difficult uh, for an anim animation, especially because like if, I, if it was a food film, I would assume they have to be eating and eating is hard uh, because if I had like an apple they're eating, then I have to like, you know, deform the, the model and change it. And then like there's chewing, all sorts of things I just don't want to deal with. So drama, that that's going to be fun. That's going to be really, really fun. And, and I love writing uh, dramas, which will be... Uh, which should be kind of easy. Uh, so now I'm waiting uh, to find out who the character is going to be because there's other elements that are required. Um, everyone's going to have the same character. Everyone's going to have the same occupation of said character. Um, there's a line required that everyone shares and a prop. So I'm just waiting on all of those other elements before I even start to write because if I get into the writing process right now, I might be writing something completely different once I find out like it's a nurse or it's a stuntman, you know, like those are two totally different things. Um, so yes, um, I did manage to get a little bit of rest. Uh, I just woke up actually, I was laying here on the couch. Uh, and I like to do that just to calm my brain because I'm just really excited and I'm not nervous whatsoever. I'm just excited. And this this right here was, I, I think, the one biggest thing that, that really had me not nervous, but you know, that like ex excited nervousness. It's not knowing what your genre is going to be. So now that I know that, I feel good about it. And um, yeah, so awesome. And here is our next one. The character is going to be Lou or Louise Lambote or something. Artist in residence. Okay, artist in residence. What does this even mean? Okay, so my wife is telling me, uh, residence, artists belong only to that place, works only there. So yeah, uh, if, you only made f if you only made films for rodeo films, you would be their artist in residence. Hmm, 
Okay. Oh, it's a box. Okay, prop is a box. Well, that's easy. So now that I know all of the required elements, I know that uh, I had to have the character name um, uh, Lou Lambot. Uh, the character had to be a, an artist in residence, which took me a little while to understand what that meant, but I got it. Uh, and then the line had to be, uh, there must be another way, or no, there must be an easier way. Uh, the prop had to be a box and I keep forgetting whatever the next thing is. And, and, and my genre, my genre, it had to be a drama. So as soon as I got all of that, I spent about an hour to an hour and a half just writing, brainstorming, getting my heart to spill out onto this thing. Because I, knowing that it was a drama, I really, I, I knew that I, I wanted to dig deep on this. Coming into this competition, uh, you know, you have a certain number of ideas that you might want to uh, pursue, um, you know, being completely honest here, like uh, when you start, like you have your list of characters, say in real life, a real life filmmaker instead of a virtual filmmaker like myself, when you're coming into a competition like this, you have a list of actors that you can call on to make a short film with you, right? Uh, you also secure a number of locations because you want to be able to record in different places and you want to make sure that you're covered before you have to go there. So you have a list of these things. And oftentimes what people will do, and this is what I do, I look at all those things and say, okay, here's all the, the stuff that I have. This person's a little rough. They could be like a bad guy of some kind. Oh, this girl, she's cute. She could be the love interest. And this person looks a little goofy. That's the, the comedy person, you know? And you kind of have all that. And then you, you have all of those situations. Okay, I've got a coffee house. Uh, I've got a, you know, abandoned warehouse. And, and I got my friend's house, you know? <laughs> and you think about like what sort of situations could go in there. So before the film festival, I find myself like, having all of these ideas. Oh, it'd be so cool if I did this or if I did that, da, 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 da. But realistically, like all of that stuff just goes out the window. <laughs> as soon as you know anything about uh, your genre, your characters, like it's like everything goes out the window. So what I like to say is during that period of time when you are uh, brainstorming, you're just working that muscle. You're not actually creating a script or anything uh, before the competition starts, you are working your muscle to write to be able to create quickly. So that's what I did for you know the first like two days. Is I just like thought of all these different ideas, and and what came out was absolutely nothing like I had thought of previously. <laughs> but my brain was was in that mode. So um, I had I will say this: I had several scenes prepared uh, in the virtual space. I had. Uh, First, I had like a, a, a warehouse type of place, which was really cool. It was called a safe house. It was uh, downloaded from the Unreal Engine Marketplace, which is uh, really nice. Uh, I also had um, like two or three different like field and forest and mountain scenes, um, and, and they all kind of looked okay. And I had like, a, what was it, like another industrial park? And then I had like a city environment, you know? So, so before the competition started, I opened up those projects and I looked at them and I said, okay, um, is there anything that I need to do in here to make sure that this will actually run properly in Unreal Engine? So I would optimize some of the scenes, meaning like make sure that I can render and there's no weird bugs happening, right? Um, but something crazy happened that made that process actually completely useless <laughs> for me and we'll, we'll get into that. So anyway, once I had the script, once I had everything written and I felt it, then it was time to call in my actor, Will Wilson, who played the role of Lou Lambot. And here's Will's uh, recording. All right, so here we go. We are gonna do the, uh, the audio recording for Mr. Will Wilson over here who is playing the role of Lou Lambot. Lou Lambot. Lou Lambot. Lou Lambot. Got to say it a couple times so we like remember it. All right, let me get a sound check from you. Check, check. Check one, check two. Great, get a little bit loud for me. So, you thought you could get away from me, huh? You're throwing some wrestling promos right now. No. <laughs> no, sir. All right. Not this time. My name? It's Lou Lambot. Spring 
Okay, pause right there. Um, in this in this part of the script, he the, he's going through a flashback. So I'm opening up the script so I can see that part now. Uh, so there's a he's not he's 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 not angry at this part. He's actually reminiscing because exactly. he's. This is that where I'm at. Oh, okay, okay, okay. We were taking photos. Yes. Instead of don't don't go right into the impale because we want that to be a shock to the people. So. Okay. Uh, it was spring 2003. I was with my girlfriend Stacy. You got it. Ready? Yeah. Spring 2003. Why did you take her? Why? Tell me why. I think that's a wrap. Really? Yeah. Yeah, dude. That was awesome. I can't wait to hear it and see it. I can't wait to see what you do with Bigfoot. Big feet. Big feet. <laughs> that's Will Wilson. Hey, Corey Williams, genius, stellar. You guys are gonna love this. <laughs> so Will was wrapped and he did a really great job. And then after Will left, of course, I got into my character mode and I recorded my own lines. And, uh, you know, I'm not going to get into what they were. There's a reason. Um, but yeah, once I, once I was done with that, then I just started on the radio play. For any project that I do, I create a radio play first. A radio play is just like it sounds. Like if you can close your eyes and listen to the story, you can see everything. That means like all of the vocals are there, all the lines, all of everything talking, and there's there's music already and sound effects. It's like, instead of a visual storyboard, it's an audio storyboard. But what's really great about this is you can control the pace of the project, how fast it goes. You can you can make sure that you have all of your sound already there, where exactly where you need it. It's it, it's just beautiful that you can do that because like when you have a real life actor in a scene, you can't be like, Oh, after the fact I've recorded this video, can I have you just pause for a little bit right there? Like for this, I just take the audio and I just move it. <laughs> so I, I create that radio play and I listen to it and I listen to it. I listen to it until it starts, starts hitting me in the emotions because I, I made a drama, right? I wanted to make sure that the music and everything, just my heart started to feel it. So, Anyway, once I had all of that, it was time for me to go to bed. Radio play is finished. All right, it is, uh, oh, it's Saturday. It's, uh, it's 1.38 a.m. I'm tired, real tired. So that's, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and say I'm done for today or, or whatever this is. Man, I need a shower. Uh, yeah, cause, cause uh, tomorrow I need a fresh start. I'm gonna remember this in my brain and then, and then come in tomorrow or later today whatever to do this thing. I'm just tired. So, yep, I'm gonna go to sleep. I got about, I'd say four hours of sleep before I came back into the office. So yeah, I, I think I went home, I went to sleep at about, I think it was 2.45, 2.30, 2.45. And then I woke up super early in the morning and I took a shower and I didn't eat or anything. I came here and ate, ate and I was here before the sun came up. So yeah, it was, it was really early. And so um, I just listened to the script over and over and over and over again, and not to the script, to the, uh, the radio play. And I just, I just absorbed it. All right, I've made myself some breakfast. And uh, while that's cooling down, I'm gonna clean up. I cannot work in a space that looks like this. It's a little crazy, a little chaotic. Uh, so I'm gonna just tidy this up and then get into creating the character. Um, 
While I was driving this morning, by the way, I was listening to the uh, the radio play over and over and over. I live about 15 minutes uh, from here. Oh, hello, sun. The sun is up. Um, and so, like, you know, I had, a, I had a couple times to listen to it. The full radio play, by the way, runs about 4 minutes and 50 seconds uh, for the actual uh, the short film. So uh, that's good because it has to be between uh, 4 and 7 minutes long in order to uh, qualify for judging. Which I have done, thankfully. So, yeah. Um, what else did I do? I showered. Yes. I'm really excited about that. You know, uh, during a 48-hour film challenge, it, uh, it, you know, things can get really chaotic, especially when you're solo. <laughs> you know, uh, I, I allowed myself to shower. I, I've really decided this time around, like, I'm going to take really good care of myself. You know, I know my speed, I know my ability, and, and I think all of that uh, allows me to be able to relax because I'm not having to, you know, face the same sort of you know, errors that I used to face in the past. Unreal Engine has gotten a lot better, so it doesn't crash nearly as often. And um, I, I think, I feel like I've just got a good grasp on this project in general, so I don't have to worry about um, anything going wrong. I mean, things will go wrong. I don't know what it's gonna be, but I'm sure something always goes wrong. Um, but hopefully it's, uh, you know, nothing too far out of my control. All right, so here is our main character, Lou Lambot. Lou is a guy who has been uh, a wildlife photographer for some time. Uh, he's been, you know, basically living on his own, sad, broken, uh, you know, all the above. And, you know, you could see it in his eyes. I gave him a lot of expression uh, of sadness. Uh, he's, he's got that, like, photographer beard <laughs> that I don't know. It, living in Alaska, this is like if you were a photographer and you spent a lot of time in the woods, that's kind of what you looked like. <laughs> um, and uh, he, he looks angry, like he's been holding on to some demons for uh, quite some time. So <clears throat> now what we're going to do is we are going to young him up uh, because I need him to be uh, younger Lou as well. So what I'm going to do is um, uh, quickly get rid of the facial hair. Facial hair is like one of the number one things that uh, causes you, not the whole character, you dummy. Uh, it, it's it's not one of the number one things that causes you to look older, usually. Oh no, did I just delete the whole thing? Give it a minute, there we go, okay. So that looks cool, but he's, I'm not, there we go. Get rid of this. Some people just look so weird without a mustache, beard, they don't look too bad. Uh, and then I'm gonna put some more uh, color back into his hair. Uh, we're gonna get rid of the, uh, the, the, the stuff I put on his eyes. So I'm gonna go here, I'm gonna go to uh, Activate Editor. Again, I am inside Character Creator 4, a fantastic uh, character creation software that can allow you to move very quickly. So these are all the things that I put on him to age him. So I'm just gonna tick all of those off now. As you can see, he's already losing some years, which is good. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, deactivate that. So now we kind of keep that. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go find some other skin uh, that will continue to young him up. Look at that, he's already looking younger. Uh, does he look 20 years younger? Mm, no, right now it looks about 10 years younger. So now we're gonna go to quickly, uh, makeup will work. And then we'll do uh, da, 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 maybe some foundation. No, 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 no. Oh, wait, I'm in, there we go. Okay, so let's go here. Let's go uh, foundation. No, not foundation. Um, makeup and effects, no. Let's see, well, maybe, maybe new skin actually. Maybe that's what we ought to do is just give him new skin instead of makeup. So let's go to skin gen uh, generator. Um, Full makeup. Uh, no, actually, okay. You know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna come back to this. Actually, go to, you know, skin overall. Uh, realistic human skin. No, I don't need it too realistic. Normal. Uh, you know what? I'll just I'll go with I'll, I'll go with Kevin. Okay. So if I double click Kevin, uh, import all those shaders. That's fine. It's gonna keep his same facial look and look. And now he's he's uh, he's much lighter. 
Um, you know, he looks like he hasn't been out in the sun. He's a bit milky, which is which is fine. You know, but he probably spent a lot more time indoors uh, hanging out with his uh, his girlfriend Stacy. Okay, now that we got that, let's change that hair because uh, t- twenty years different hairstyle. So I'm just gonna yeah get rid of that hairstyle and then let's go to uh, let's see over here. Let's look for hair uh, to body hair. Not not body. I don't want body hair. I want just hair. Just the hair. Here's the hair like this and let's go to hairstyles we don't want this hairstyle i don't really think that's the best hairstyle uh, let's go let's go with a pack so i have uh, all these different uh, hairstyle packs um, that i can choose from right so let's go here and let's see we'll go to prime hairstyles and let's just try on some different hairs and see what feels good um, actually you know what that's not that's not bad but he, weirdly, he could use like some some sort of facial hair of some kind. I don't I don't know. Well, anyway, I'm gonna keep working on this. Um, I'll change the color of his shirt. I'll uh, I'll take down his body fat. Let's do that really quick. Actually, I'm gonna show you this because I, I like this. Um, so I gave him just a little bit of body fat for his age. Uh, so let's uh, let's let's do that. I'm gonna go. Click on our guy here, go to body, and uh, let's go down. So here I give him body fat. You just slide that down a little bit. He's thinner now. And let's uh, let's now give him, um, and he's already muscular. But let's, let's, uh, actually, let's, let's tone him up a little bit. Let's take the muscular. Oh, that's a little weird. Hang on. Yeah, you know what? I'm just, I'm just... I'm I'm talking through this thing and I'm and I'm gonna I'm gonna lose my place. So what I'm gonna do is I'll keep working on this and then and then you will see the uh, end result of it. But yeah, this is the process. I'm just younging him up like this and then I'll change all the rest of his clothes and all that, which is really easy because I could just go like this. Go. All right, I got my character line up. Uh, looks really good. I might as well just jump on and show you in in here. All right, so here we've got uh, Bigfoot, obviously, as you can see. Uh, Bigfoot looking, looking crazy. It, of course, it doesn't look as good in uh, Character Creator 4 because, you know, the, the, the actual materials that make him look amazing live inside Unreal. So I just brought over like basic stuff so I can kind of get a visualization of what he looks like. Um, and then uh, here's uh, the older version of Lou. Um, you know, as you saw earlier, he's weathered and... Um, you know he's kind of he's kind of been through it and now here is the younger version of Lou you can tell it's the same guy definitely a 20 year life difference in his face and remember like you know when you go through heavy amounts of sadness and you spend a lot of time outside a lot of time in the sun you know as a photographer doing all that stuff like you you age pretty quickly so i feel like you know looking between the two of them uh, there may be a little bit more than 20 years, but I, I feel that's actually probably about right. The, the more that I look at it, the more I think, yeah, 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 this is, this is good. So, you know, again, going close, I ended up putting uh, his little um, soul patch back on there because I, I feel like that just uh, works for him, uh, especially in 2003, because this took place in 2003. And I think in that time, that hairstyle was kind of, <laughs> it wasn't, well, I don't want to make any judgment. Uh, it was around <laughs> and the soul patch, you know, like he, he probably listened to a lot of like, uh, gosh, the music in that, that point in time. Uh, there were a lot of people that just had soul patches. Uh, okay. Anyway. And then, um, you know, thinned him out, not too thin. Uh, he's still wearing uh, the same sort of pants, right? And then he's got those shoes right there that are just, um, I don't know. He's getting ready to propose to his girlfriend and uh, and that's how he is. And then this is uh, this is Stacy. Stacy realistically is Camilla. It's she was a standard character. I didn't do a single thing to change her. And I don't. I, I'm not. I'm not going to worry about it because she's not like the most important part of this story. She's just like an important part. Uh, and so, yeah, whatever. She's so little, isn't she? She's so itty bitty. Which makes it all the scarier between her and uh, Sasquatch. So, all right, now that I've got them, uh, I've been listening to the radio play. Uh, I feel comfortable with it. So, I'm going to go ahead now and get set up for mocap. And now that I know what they look like and now that I know that I have them, everything's going to be good. So, the next step in all of this was rehearsal. 
Uh, as soon as I had the character lineup, I was really happy with it. I knew what they looked like. I kind of knew how they needed to move. And because I had been listening to the radio play like all morning, I knew it like the back of my hand. So I knew exactly how all of them needed to be. So after a bunch of rehearsals without the uh, motion capture suit, uh, I was ready for mocap. All right, here we go with rehearsal. We're gonna start out with uh, a couple seconds of music to just kind of get me into place. And then there's gonna be five beeps followed by one big beep and that's gonna let me know uh, when this thing starts. So I'm gonna clap with the beats uh, for calibration and then get right into it. So I'm gonna do Lou first. Here we go. That's just, again, a rehearsal. Music slowing, calibration. So, you thought you'd get away from me, huh? I've been tracking you for some time now. All right, it is time to put on all the fun stuff. So, um, I am putting on my uh, motion capture gloves. These are uh, Manus Quantum uh, Meta Gloves. They're amazing gloves. A little bit hard to put on, um, but the results I get are fantastic. The motion capture suit that I'm wearing right now is an Exxon's MVN Link suit. Uh, and then I'm going to be wearing a standard deviation helmet, uh, which will hold my iPhone for real-time facial capture. Uh, which saves me a lot of time in the animation process. Um, and uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's basically all I'm going to be using uh, for mocap. Um, oh, see, see how, see, this is what's ridiculous. Sometimes I get caught up on stuff. Again, I love these gloves. I wish there was an easier way to use them because it's a pain in the butt. But worth it in the end. <laughs> Here is how the motion is going to be captured. On this workstation here, uh, I will be recording all of my body data. So as you can see, my hands are currently being tracked using Manus Core, uh, of course, coming from my uh, Manus Quantum gloves. Very, very precise. I, I haven't even calibrated them yet and they're already looking really great. Um, and of course, this hand over here is holding the camera, so I can't show you that motion capture. But yeah, uh, this is going to run and then feed the hand animation data into the Xsense Animate software uh, where I will basically capture the body. And then down here, um, I'm showing you an example of my iPhone uh, connected to this is iClone 8 using the Motion Live plugin. So I'll go ahead and simulate, and this is where I'm going to record all of the facial work at the same time. So here we go. I'm going to hit that and press space. Pa. Hmm. Yes. As you can see, the character is moving along with mine and I'm, I'm just kind of just talking. So I'm, I'm not going to record the head motions because of course that is coming from the, um, you know, the accents, <laughs> but, um, yeah, facial eye look positions, all of that will be baked in real time. And when you hear those beeps, I'll be gone. Pop. Pop, pop, just to, you know, better calibrate things. So yeah, that's what it looks like from my side. All right, so here's the calibration process. This is how I'm able to make sure that everything is working properly with the suit. Go to a starting position where you can safely perform the calibration. Now. And everything looks good. All right, now it's time for the fun stuff. 
get everything going all at the same time and make sure it all records at the same time. Pop, 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 pop. Zero pose calibration for this. Yes, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Okay, we are good to go here. So here we go. This is take one. Recording accents. Data is clean. Recording iPhone. Data is clean. And playing audio. Here we go. So the motion capture process went off without a hitch. Uh, didn't really have any major problems. And thankfully, like all of my first takes were actually the ones that I used. So the process didn't take very long at all because it was just like, yep, that works, moving on. All right, here we go. This is Bigfoot take one recording XNs. XNs data is good, awesome, and here we go. All right, now here's where things get a little trickier. I have to play uh, both Young Lou and Stacy because my wife's not here. I don't have anybody else to play that. So I'm gonna do my best. And because I can't see myself or act with anybody, I have to remember all of my actions. So let's see how it, uh, how it turns out. Going from the start, Young Lou, take one. Rolling accents. Realistically, I don't have to go through the whole play. I just have to go to that one part. Spring 2003. I was with my girlfriend Stacy. We were on a hike, but I wanted to catch her. All right. Unfortunately, I do have to play Stacy. Uh, my wife is uh, going to be busy and as much as I would love to have her, I've got to move on, move forward. Stacy is supposed to fall down and get hurt. Well, I'm not gonna fall down on this hard surface wearing a motion capture suit because A, I might break my suit and B, it'll hurt a little bit. Uh, and I don't have a crash pad. I thought I did, I thought I could just take the couch cushions off but it's an Ikea couch and there are no cushions. They're just stuck onto the couch. So I'm gonna have to just uh, 
I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how I'm going to do it. I think maybe the fall is going to have to be hand animated, which makes things a little bit harder, but I don't know. We'll see what happens. All right, let's get to recording Stacy. I got to think like my wife. How does my wife walk? All right, here we go. <laughs> oh my gosh. All right. And rolling Stacy one. So it's going to be very interesting. Very interesting. I'm a girl. So, you thought you'd get away from me, huh? <laughs> yes. Oh my gosh. Okay, I think I got the hips. I think I got the hips. My name is Lou Lambot. And 20 years ago, you took something precious from me. Spring 2003. I was with my girlfriend Stacy. We were all alike, but I wanted to capture her. She made the world me. Oftentimes, when you're doing mocap, you have to really think on another plane. Like, you have to, like, truly imagine your world um, and, and, and when it comes to something like this, the tragedy, um, yeah, I, uh, I just made do with what I had and did my best to be tragic, <laughs> I guess. That's it, motion capture is all wrapped. So now I just gotta take all of these things off. Man, taking these gloves off, so much easier than putting them on. <laughs> but looks like the data was good. I'm happy with the performances. Um, yeah. Okay, so here we are back at the main workstation and I have imported the project from my laptop into this uh, so that I could start uh, working on the face and applying the body animation and all of that. So here we are inside of iClone 8. Here's iClone Kevin like you saw earlier on my laptop. We're going to go ahead and press play and make sure all those face shapes are there. And yep, it looks like it. So what we're also going to need to do is we need to find where those beeps are. The beep, beep, beep. And now just watch his face. We'll see the mouth open. It's probably going to be around 23 seconds. That's my guess. Beep. Okay, right there. So 20, about 22 seconds is the first beep potentially, right? Okay, so now what we're going to do is we are going to control the lips. Well, actually, first, let's switch out the character. Let's, let's do that. So uh, here's Lou on the left side. I'm going to go ahead and make sure that I have iClone Kevin selected. Yes, double click on Lou, and it's just going to swap out that character. That is the beauty of the Reillusion Suite. It's fast, super fast. It's okay, give it a second. There you go. <laughs> oh, man, that character looks so good. So good. Oh, okay. Play. I'm going to go ahead and play again, make sure that his face is moving. Yeah, look at that. Double checking. Everything looks Pretty good. Looks like his blinks might be a little bit too exaggerated, but the nice thing is I can go clean them up later on, so I'm not too worried about it. Great. Uh, now what we need to do is we need to bring in Will's audio. Notice when I was doing the motion capture, I didn't actually um, uh, like lip sync myself. I didn't. I wasn't talking. Right. I was just listening to Will because what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take Will's recording. That's just, um, you know, just by itself. It's, it's, um, 
yeah, by itself, whatever. Uh, and I'm going to bring it into here and use a uh, plugin called Aculips to essentially create the text from the audio. And then that text is then going to drive the mouth shapes so that I don't have to place every mouth shape uh, and I don't have to be perfect. It'll get, it won't get perfect, but it'll get like 70% closer to perfect. So if I can get there faster, I'll use it. So here we go. Uh, going to, I'm going to, I should not plugins. I'm going to go to animation. I'm going to go to create script and then I'm going to go to Aculips and I'm going to upload that file using this little button right here. And it's going to be right here, older Lou. There we go. And I'll click open. So now what this is going to do, uh, I'll go ahead and generate text. Uh, this is going to, again, it's going to listen to uh, Will's audio and then create text and that text drives the mouth. So it's reading everything and then you're gonna see all the text written in there. It's not gonna be perfect, uh, especially if you're somebody who, who speaks quietly or uh, or if you have like a thick accent of, of some kind, it sometimes can be a, a little tricky. Um, but, but I found that it, it really, again, it, it speeds up the workflow, you know, and it's, it's, it's really amazing. There, there's just so many good tools. I, I sound like I'm trying to sell Reillusion software, but like, Really, I'm just trying to say, hey, this is really good stuff. Uh, but no, I'm not. I'm not sponsored. I'm not paid by uh, Reillusion to say any of this. I just genuinely love it. This is my pipeline. So once that is done, then we will move that animation and audio to match with the beeps. So let's give it just a moment. Usually, it's pretty quick. It's just trying to uh, take that. And also uh, with this, there is a five, uh, five minute limit on audio for Aculips. So if you have something that is recorded more like longer than five minutes, you're gonna have to like cut it and then like upload the, or do the, the second part of the audio, which can be a total pain in the butt, but that's, it, that's what it is. So luckily with this one here though, I didn't have uh, too much. Oh yeah. So I can, I can already see some weird stuff. It, it, it didn't really learn what Will was saying exactly, but I, I I'm not, I'm not going to worry about it. I'm not going to be nitpicky. And again, it's not going to be perfect and it may not be like super pretty, but it's about getting there faster. It's about getting to 70% faster so that I can do the rest. And, and who knows, maybe it'll actually look really great and I won't have to worry about it at all. We'll see how it goes. Okay, give that a moment. It said assistance of the dictionary. And if there are any of those words that, that I can like type out to, you know, help it, I, I, I could. But you know, really, given the time, this is a 48 hour film challenge. I, I'm not gonna sit here and obsess over face shapes. You know, that's, I, I can do that later if I have time. So great, I'm just gonna take it. Let's make sure though that it, it actually created face shapes. Okay, there's the beeps and right there. Yes, so it, it has created face shapes based on that. Okay, yeah, so I'm gonna go ahead and say apply. Now, what we're gonna do is listen for those beeps. Where's my audio? There we go, okay, so there are the beeps. You can see the, the waveforms, which is why I use beeps because the waveforms are very easy to see. And we know that at 22 seconds, like right there was like the first one. So like watch his mouth pop, right, pop, 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 pop. Okay, so that was the last one. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and just grab this whole thing and just move it right there like that. So. Move it a little bit forward. I realize you can't hear the beeps. I apologize. I'm looking over and I can see that it's not recording desktop audio. So it looks like he's a little bit soon. So let's go like one frame back.
Yep, that was perfect. All right, so we've got that. All right, so now that we've got that, let's go ahead and watch and listen. So, you thought you can get away from me, huh? I've been tracking you for some time now. I've tracked you so long I know what you eat. I've seen where you slept. And I know you have some pretty nasty habits. See, look at that. It's not, again, it's not perfect, but it's like 70% there. All I've got to do is add in those little face shapes. And what's really cool about this is I can go back through on my phone like this and say, you know what? I, I want to re-record a couple things, but I just want to focus on recording, not specifically, not this way. I want to record just the way the cheeks are or just the way these other things are. So watch this. I'll select the character. Here we go. Go like this. And then look, I can click on what parts specifically I want to control. So I'm not going to touch the eyes because I like where he was looking. I'm not going to touch the eyebrows, but you know what? I'm going to, I'm going to touch the cheeks and maybe the chin. So I'm going to not touch this, not touch that, not that, not that, not that, not that, right? And then do blend and watch this. I want you to bear in mind something. I'm not looking for fame or any kind of reward money. Uh-uh. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, <laughs> horrible performance there. But yeah, you get the idea. I just realized I should be showing you what I'm doing right now. So, okay, I got the uh, motion capture data out of the other machine. Uh, XN's you know, basically just cleans up the data so it's super, super smooth. And then once I got that out of the other machine, <clears throat> I uploaded it to my Google Drive and downloaded it from my Google Drive, and now uh, it's in this machine. So I'm back in Character Creator 4 to uh, import all of the animation onto these basic skeletons that you're seeing here uh, on, on the screen here. This is a skeleton that I created probably a, a year ago, uh, and it's just a skeleton that is specifically meant to process XN's data. So like, I don't have to like go and assign where all the bones go and all that. I literally just say, okay, this is the character that I want. Now all I have to do is over here in this corner, click import animation and that's it. But first, yeah. So here's what I do. I gotta go import animation and then find the other stuff. So there's Sasquatch 01 and I'm gonna go ahead and bring in Sasquatch 01. And then it goes, oh, okay, yes. Are you going to use the current character? Yes. And then convert. Like, that's the fastest retargeting. <laughs> you know, like, I don't have to sit there and, like, go through everything and, and whatever. And, and what's great is, like, once this is all retargeted, I can apply this animation to anything that I have in Character Creator 4 or iClone because it just lives in there. Uh, so on the side here... <clears throat> That's just, you know, files that are shared between the two uh, programs that I use for, for stuff, character creation and animation. So, yeah. And then, yeah, I'm just going to go make sure, you know, I'm, I'm, in, um, I'm in the custom mode and I'm down here in my motion custom folder. And I'm just going to say, um, what is this? Uh, Sasquatch01. There's another Sasquatch one that I have in there too, Runaway, but yeah. So yeah, and then that's it. I just hit okay, and then boom. And see, the thing is too, it doesn't matter who the character is, even though this skeleton is just a normal skeleton, I'm just, I'm just saving the animation data, so it doesn't matter what the skeleton looks like because it's applied to anything. So it's just, yeah, like think about, think about all that time you save trying to do all that stuff. So like here's Stacy, like, you know, Stacy and Sasquatch look very different. But the way this works, man, it, it doesn't it doesn't matter. So, um, yeah, I'm getting ready to now uh, apply this animation data to um, to older Lou, uh, who is still right now in uh, iClone eight. So I have Character Creator open and iClone eight open. So all I did was open this up. So all right, cool. That's in there. I'm gonna save uh, save this. So Stacy underscore oh one and that's it that was all my takes and what's great i don't even have to save i could just close so 
close that out. Would you like to close? Yes. Or save? No, I, I don't need to. I don't need to do that. So uh, let's go. No. Nope. All right. Great. Okay. So here we are. Here's Lou. Um, update on this. I can't do this anymore. He, it looks so, so good. Lots of expression, lots of anger. I did a lot of work uh, to do that. It's, it's currently 1.44, so it was, I probably put like an hour worth of work of like uh, recording my own face to add in expressions, uh, keying certain things, other expressions into them. So like here I can go, uh, I want to raise his eyebrow, lower his eyebrow. I want to have uh, these other expressions to, to really bring out something, you know, like whatever. Or I can take this and physically drag this and move the, the eyebrow or, or whatever to any way. I mean, it's just a lot of different tools. All right, anyway, so uh, we're gonna go ahead now and bring in that animation that I just uh, imported. So I'm gonna go here to this little guy and then I'm gonna go to motion and then 48 hour and look at that. There it is right there inside of iClone. So uh, I'm gonna go now to, actually, you know what? I, I think This might actually be the beginning of the clip. And I can tell you that's true because see this little like marker right there? All I gotta do is match these little uh, little things to the, uh, the claps. So let's do that. All right, so um, all I have to do is make sure he's selected. Yes, uh, this is Older Lou. Um, yep, Older Lou, here we go. Older Lou one, I just double click that. And it'll bring it right into my timeline. And I'll bring the timeline over once this is all done. <clears throat> and then uh, we, I will have to adjust uh, the thumbs because there's just something with, uh, if, with the thumbs uh, that gets a little wonky with X and stuff. I used to think it was Manus, but really it's, it's actually a, an X and thing. You see, that? see the thumbs? Ugh. <laughs> so I'll, I'll show you my process of cleaning that up. Oh, there's the beep. Okay. Oh yeah, obviously. Hang on, let me bring this over here so we can see it. Well, actually, we'll watch him. Okay. Wait till he claps his hands. So. Bump. Bump. So. Bump. 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 So that's the last beep right there, right? So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna bring this over and knowing that um, his animation data, which is, let me bring up motion. Yeah, uh, that's it right there. So what I need to do is I could either cut it, which I, I could do, or I could just move it but I know it's about right there. So actually, I think I do need to cut it. So I'm gonna take a look at this and then I'm gonna cut it. So, bump. 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 There, actually, I'm gonna cut it right there. Uh, that way I can put it onto the second one. Okay, so right there is gonna be a cut. So I'm gonna go to break. And it's just gonna, it's like a splice. It just stops that thing right there. I'm gonna back it out, delete the first half of that. And now I'll just move this little tab over to the second little thing right there. So you can see where that beep is. So, there you go. Now let's take a look at it and see how accurate this all was. So, you thought you can get away from me, huh? I've been tracking you for some time now. I've tracked you so long I know what you eat. I've seen where you slept. Oh man, I just realized something. Ah, oh, I think his eyes are flipped, they're mirrored. No! Okay, there's got to be a way I can fix this, which I can still handle the eyes if I want to do it like manually. So I can just click these two things here and then hold this black area and see how I can do that. It's not ideal. See, I should be looking the other way. Like when you turn, you typically turn your eyes 
towards the direction you are moving. So yeah. All right, this would be a fun little problem for me to figure out. All right, I have fixed the problem. Simple fix, um, but in the future, uh, Corey, don't do this. Anyway, <laughs> what I did was rather than trying to uh, mirror the facials, which I, I wish I could have done, I was not able to. Uh, so it's because really what you could do is you go to facials, you right click, and if there was an option to mirror, that would be amazing, but there's not. However, in the body motion, you can right click and you can go up to, where was it? Ah, right there, mirror clip. And that just essentially flips everything. So uh, once I bring this into Unreal Engine, all I have to do is just flip the character. I mean, really, it's it's not ideal, but it's not gonna break anything. It's not gonna change anything. It's just let, it's, yeah, slightly different. So, <clears throat> yeah. All right, so let's check it out, have a look. And uh, I didn't touch anything with the eyes. Now that it's flipped, you can see how great it actually is. So watch his eyes. So, you thought you can get away from me, huh? Yep, see that? I've been tracking you for some time now. I've tracked you so long I know what you eat. I've seen where you slept. Yep. And I know you have some pretty nasty habits. See, um, I've been a wildlife photographer for most of my life now. Whew. Clean, that's clean. Could be cleaner, but again, it's a 48 hour film festival and I'm not, I'm not trying to get to 100%, I'm trying to get to done. <laughs> yes, all right. So uh, next thing I want to share um, is something called pose offset within here. Um, it's something I didn't know about until sort of recently. And it's funny because there's a big old button saying, hey, I'm right here. Uh, but rather try, rather than trying to adjust the skeletons each time, I just do it right here. So uh, this little button right here, you just click off, click uh, pose offset, give it a moment. It can take a, a minute to just um, open up and it's gonna put the skeleton underneath the character. And usually, I didn't do it in this take, I don't know why, uh, but usually I, I do a really quick T pose for myself so that I can do the offsets. Uh, this is the one time that I didn't, but it's it's no big deal. I can still kind of do it from here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna just grab this and first let's fix those hands because ew, I don't like those hands. All right, so there's that. Actually, you know, let's go. Can I? I can't drag from the timeline. I can only drag from here. Okay. Let's go to where like he's doing the calibration claps. And then we can kind of get a better idea. There. Okay. So let's take a look at the, the, the thumbs from there. So you can see that they're kind of rotated out. Uh, also, his arms are, are a little bit too much in. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to go ahead and grab these arms. Um, I can grab it from there and I can just rotate it out slightly. Same thing for, from there. I could rotate it out slightly. Um, and then it looks like this arm actually, we'll just meet him halfway. This goes up a little bit, that goes down a little bit, like that. Um, and let's see if I can get it. I'll catch one of these claps. So comes in for the clap. Boom. All right, so let's do this. Let's go ahead and, well, he doesn't necessarily need to touch hands, but it would be nice for later on, I suppose. So bring that one in a little bit, same thing. Bring this one in just a tad, a little bit more on this side. And it looks like they're about right. This could come up just a little bit. You can see the thumbs there. I'm not gonna care so much about the fingers because I'm, I'm not touching hands very often. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move this hand like that and then rotate that thumb like so. Same thing with this hand. Make sure I grab that right bone. So it's gonna be the thumb 01 or thumb one, whatever you wanna call it. So I'm gonna rotate that in like that and then rotate that and that 
Maybe put a little bit more rotation in there to, to feel good. And sometimes the ends of the thumbs can get a little wonky too. I'm not sure why that is, but um, there it is. I can see it. But we'll just keep an eye on that, right? So. I'm going to come back down and take a look at this and it's not setting keyframes. That's the big important thing here is it's not, it's set, it's just basically saying, okay, from this point on, it rotates from this specific position. I feel like this thumb is still kind of coming out the wrong way. Oh, undo that little bit that I just did there. I'm going to grab that thumb one, bring it out, bring it up, out. That looks okay. Same thing over here. Take a look at this. Out, up, I think I might've gotten it. All right, so now we just play and then feel it out. You can see there's a little bit of clipping going on with the uh, the hands. There was for a second. So, you thought you could Right there. So uh, if you look at that right hand, you can see that it's clipping through here. So what I'm gonna do actually is I'm going to go ahead now and take that arm one more time and just a little bit out, just a little bit out. This this arm looks like it could actually go forward. You can get away from me, huh? I've been tracking you for some time now. I've tracked you so long, I know what you eat. I've seen where you slept. And I know you have some pretty nasty habits. See, um... I've been a wildlife photographer for most of my life now. See, it's funny because I'm watching the hands so much, but realistically, like I wasn't moving my hands all that much. So it's not really much to watch for, you know? But I'm still looking, okay. And you've been my focus. And you've been my focus. All right, so let's take a look at that. That, that thumb. I've been a wildlife photographer for most of my life now. And you've been. Okay, that is going to be a good representation. Okay, so yeah, thumb, thumb right here needs to come up. And see that, that, that twist in, the, uh, in, the, in the, the end of the thumb? I don't know why this happens, but it does. It's like the rotation is off. But yeah, so it still needs to come up a little bit. Once I find that sweet spot, it, I don't have to worry about it anymore. In my focus. I even went so far as to work my way into a residency here. So I can dedicate more of my time. The most Finding important you. thing is not being perfect. It's being not noticeable. I want you to bear in mind something. I'm not looking for fame. Or any kind of reward money. Uh-uh. This... This is personal. You know who I am? My name is Lou Lambot. And 20 years ago... I'm still going to fix that thumb a little bit because I feel like that thumb could come out. Did I get the wrong side? Yeah, I did. Alright, and then I should probably stop messing with the thumbs. ago you took something precious from me all right look at that thumb right there see how it's sitting on the chest i know i should i should stop doing this but i can't help it uh looks like it's uh is it this that's causing the issues for me spring 2003 you know what? I'm just not going to mess with it anymore. Moving on. <laughs> so it is now uh, 4.56 p.m. Saturday, and uh, I have animated just about everyone uh, in, this, in this short film. I've got, I've got one more person to animate, uh, and, and I don't think it's going to be all that hard. It's um, Stacy. My brain's getting super tired. Um, I'm well ahead of schedule, I think. Um, 
And I, I think Stacy's probably only going to take me like 30 minutes to edit or to, to make <laughs> whatever. I mean, she's already done, but I have to like do, you know, more stuff. Um, after that, when I'm done with that, I'm just going to go straight to the couch and sleep because tonight, well, I thought, I thought about actually going home and sleeping tonight, but I think it would be very wise for me to stay up as long as I possibly can and just kick butt here. <sighs> yeah. So when Stacy's done, I'm going to take a nap and then good to go. Oh, by the way, uh, the young version of Lou was completely hand animated outside of the mocap. All of his facials, everything was all done inside of iClone by hand. I was going to use this, but I really wanted to pull more emotions out of him. So, um, yeah, when you see that, just know it was done by hand. So now it's time to show you the technicals, things inside of Unreal Engine uh, that allow me to do all of this. So uh, if you're into Unreal Engine technicals, this is the section for you where you can maybe learn some things to help you with your workflow in some way, shape or form. Um, I had plenty of problems. I, you know, managed to conquer them with good solutions and all of that. So yes, here's a, a pretty long section of fun technical stuff inside the engine. I have napped and I feel great. I have energy. Um, it was like an hour and a half nap. I, I just, I just feel so much better. So, um, I have pulled in the characters into Unreal Engine. I haven't put them in the scenes yet, um, but I'm about to do that now. So I thought I would just run through this process uh, with you. It is currently 8.04 p.m. Whoosh. Saturday, October 14th. Let's go. All right, so uh, here we are. This is the first scene. This is where Bigfoot is locked up in a cage. How did he get locked up in there? Uh, tranquilizer darts. That's what we're going to go with. Um, we don't we don't dig into that story of of why, but this is the situation that we are in. And then clearly, like he could just break out of there, right? But you know, keep in mind. It, it makes sense in the story if you really get deep into the shallow level of lore <laughs> that is made in 48 hours. <laughs> All right. Okay, here we go. So let's go ahead and do. Uh, so first thing we're going to do is we are going to um, create some subsequences and then we are going to create a master sequence. Uh, so what I'm going to do, actually, I'm going to go and I'm going to go to my movies folder and I'm going to right click over here and I'm going to go to animation and I am going to... Da -da 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 cinematics and then go to uh animation my thing level sequence there we go and then i'm gonna say ls underscore um oh gosh what a shot oh one it's my creative right there i'm using my creative and all the other stuff okay so what we're gonna do is uh we're gonna focus on uh getting these uh, like a camera set up for each one of these and then we can cut back and forth between them. So, uh, but, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and spawn a new camera in here like this. Boom. Once I have that camera in there, I'm going to go ahead and set how I want this camera to be. Now, here, here's something that I like to do. Uh, it may not be everyone's cup of tea, but for me personally, I love doing this. Uh, I go to camera component. And then let me move my big head out of the way. I'll just move it over here like this. I'll just move it. Like that, just a little bit all the way. Uh, and then I'm going to go to uh, sensor, sensor size down here. And what I'm going to do is simply double this, uh, both of these numbers. I like to have really big sensors uh, so that I can do more in, in smaller spaces. Uh, it's funny because like in this, this space, I have a lot of space, but yeah, I, I just this is what I do. So uh, 23.76 times 2 equals uh, 47.52. So 47.52. And double this. It always looks so cool when it goes super wide like that. Uh, Thirteen point three six five times two equals uh, twenty six seventy three. Twenty six point seventy three. I should really like remember these numbers. All right. So now that I've got that doubled, uh, I'm able to punch this in. So I'm going to go to fifty millimeter lens, and it just gives me a more cinematic look. I can get more more uh, depth of field in there. Uh, I can do a lot more stuff. 
So if I want to focus on this guy, I can go like that. If I if I if I don't want to show Bigfoot right away, that's you know something I can do. Um, and then if I need to go back a little bit further, I can still keep depth of field. So yeah, it can still look good. Really, the lighting though is is what's really going to make this thing pop uh, once these cameras are placed in properly. So uh, now that I've got that, I'm going to make sure that I have these uh, cameras set uh, how I want because we are going to essentially duplicate this level sequence uh, and then go one by one um, to do this. So uh, going down now into the, I'm going to go to film, make sure these look good and, and look how I want them to. So we are in this camera angle. Okay, good. Uh, and then I'm going to I don't necessarily need to adjust the slope toe or shoulder, but I am going to do it just because I want to see if I can make it look just a little bit better. Sometimes I just shake it a little bit. It's tough too, because I have to keep in mind, like this is going to be seen on a movie screen, you know, I don't want to like crush it too much, crush the, the colors but I want it to look really good. So that, I mean, that, that actually feels good. I didn't do too much adjustment uh, to that at all, but see, I add a little bit of darkness, lightened up the, uh, the mids a little bit and looks like nothing to shoulder and I didn't really touch the white or black clip, but that's no big deal. Um, again, right now it's about speed. Uh, enable motion blur, absolutely do. So enable, yes. Target FPS, I'm gonna go 24 FPS. I'm gonna make sure that this is changed to 24 FPS. Good, good. I'm going to go to uh, film grain and I, you know, I could add film grain in afterwards, but I'm just going to do it here. And I think I'm actually going to add film grain to the highlights a little more so, but just to the highlights. So you can kind of, you, know, you may or may not be able to see those, uh, the film grain kind of going crazy up there in the, in the hotter areas. So I'm going to enable shadows and I'm going to take the film grain down out of the shadows. To me personally, that's just what feels good and maybe down out of the mid range as well. Okay. Yeah. It's very, very minor stuff. Okay. Now that I've got that, um, I am going to go to, da, 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 where is it at? Come on brain film color. Yeah, no, not film. Um, uh, res rendering features. Res. So my brain is uh, having a brain fart. I'm still kind of waking up, but it is here. What I'm looking for is my chromatic abbreviation. So I'll go uh, 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 aberration, sorry, abbreviation. So I like to go 1.4 or 0.14. It just pulls it out just enough. Again, it's better to do this outside of Unreal but in this case, um, I need speed. So this, oh, oh, look at that shot. Look how pretty, look how pretty that shot looks. Yeah, it popped. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and save that one. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm uh, gonna go ahead and uh, bring in the audio for this. Uh, so this is going to help me later on to be able to set things up. So I'm going to go to track. I'm going to go to, oh, you know what? Actually, I have to import the audio. I have not done that yet. And I'm going to go ahead and save my scene. Okay, so to import the audio, I'm going to go here. And then uh, let's, do I have a sound folder? No, I don't. So I'm going to create one. New folder, sound. Enter folder. And then I'm going to import my sound, which I exported earlier, or actually later last night. Or earlier, technically earlier, because it was super late. Oh, no, no, it was 11, 11.04 a.m. today. Oh, okay, yeah, earlier. <laughs> Days. Okay, there we go. So I'm going to go ahead and import that. Give that just a moment. Boom. Okay, we got it. We got it. We got it. And I'm going to go ahead and save all just to make sure that that saves in there. And there it is. Great. All right. So let's go ahead now and import the sound. So we'll get our soundtrack in here. So go here, go to uh, audio track. There's audio track. And now we're going to select our sound, which is right on top. Very convenient. And I'm going to scroll all the way out, move this all the way to the end. Do, do, do. And there we go. Just like that. And then put my end marker on there. 
Great. Okay, so this sound, I believe, is going to have the pops in it. So, yep, there are the pops. So, pop, pop, pop. All right, so let's go ahead and um, bring me over. <laughs> All right. So what I'm going to do now is uh, I'm going to go ahead and extend this out. So extend the shot. So I'm going to grab this. I'm holding down control and uh, scroll down, so, uh, or like mouse wheel down. That extends that out. And then I will go ahead and I think I'll go ahead and just uh, try, try to think if I want to just bring in his animation here or not. I suppose so. I think that makes sense to do. My brain's doing too many things right now. Okay, so yeah, I'll just bring him in. So whatever. Okay, so here he is. Uh, we already know that the animation is exactly as long as that radio play. So it shared it through iClone and all of that. So I'm just going to go ahead and bring it in. Here it is. All right, so I'm going to go ahead now and rotate my guy out here. And get him into position. So I'm, I know one place where he touches the door. And it's right there right so i know that this needs to be about right there and we're going to cheat this shot too so let's see if this looks like if he's standing there that's all right i don't mind that let's take world so i can rotate him out and then his look position looks good because uh, technically this guy is going to be standing back a bit further. And I wanted him to be not too terribly close, close to the cage, but there. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and save that. Now I'm going to call this guy in. And I'm going to say, hey, you. Man, I should not I should have just put in the SK, whatever. Let's just let's do it now. I'm going to go um, uh, Bigfoot. And then let's uh, change this guy so he doesn't have a super long name. <laughs> Older man. We'll call him Lou. <laughs> Good. Okay, so uh, going back to the beginning, I had that problem before because my brain was being a silly. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and import the animation. It's going to be the same for uh, Bigfoot. So here's this one. There was, uh, I, I thought I renamed these. I guess not. I just add all the other stuff on. Oh, it's, okay, there. So it's it's going to be exactly the same length and all the same um, calibration stuff. And he's almost standing exactly in place. But let's go back to where he's going to turn around. So right here, I wanted him to be facing Lou. And also, let's make sure that he is the correct scale. Uh, so he is at 1.2. That is correct. And let's make sure he's touching the floor because both of these guys should be touching the floor. Uh, where's my marker there? There it is. So bring it down so his boots are touching the floor. Got it. And then I'm going to make sure too to uh, uh, tick the um, transform button so that it, it's, it saves that and save, save for this guy here. Let's bring him down to the floor. I'll watch the back of those heels. Watch for the yellow to clip through. And right there's probably... Yeah, that's good enough. You can kind of see it clip through um, on this little side here. Yes. Good. And it looks like he is the correct size. And he looks like he's looking the correct angle. I feel like he could actually rotate slightly more. Let's take, the, take off that little rotator. there okay save that let's keep Bigfoot's uh, position as well so I'm gonna go ahead and click that and just for safety's sake I'll bring these uh, keyframes all the way to the front because that's where I I know that is the um, the best place let the, let the portal music play and let's see let's see if it plays through right Disregard calibration. So, you thought you can get away from me, huh? I've been tracking you for some time now. I've tracked you so long I know what you eat. I 
I've seen where you slept. And I, know I feel like he's too close to the cage. I think later on we can bring him in closer. But for now, that's what we're going to do. Uh, also, let's let's rotate this light a little bit so it's a little bit closer to him as well. So I'm just going to take the uh, the head rotation of this arm, or the, of the of the uh, the head thing here. Just kind of go like that, and then um, I will open the spot radius. That's not spot, right? The spot radius should be the, the roundness, not the that not the entu, entonation. entonation? <laughs> All right, I'll grab it right here, and I'll just do it from this angle. So cone out. And let's open that center up a little bit. Cool. And then we'll hide this. And that should give us a little bit more. I kind of like a, a more dramatic look, though. So I'm going to go back to here. I'm going to take that inner cone in. It's a little more spotlight focused on him. Okay. Oh, and you know what? Um, he's actually still standing really close. So I'm going to take him back. Yeah. Okay. So I'll do that. And then uh, I'll just keyframe from this point because I don't want him to move necessarily. But I want him to stay right there. All right, cool. And then Bigfoot, I actually wanted him to be further back in the cage initially. And then I could put a spotlight on him a little bit more. But I don't know. Maybe that's, maybe that's good. Maybe that's good. You know what? I'm just going to say that that's good. I, I will cheat shots as I need to. Um... For some other stuff later. All right, cool. Now that I got that, I'm going to go ahead and say that camera angle is just the first one, and I'm going to come back and work on that uh, on that camera. But for now, that is uh, that's good. So, and then I'll just I'll go ahead and call this um, camera underscore or cam o one cam underscore o one. All right, and I will leave that be. So now I'm gonna go ahead and just duplicate that. Let's go here, level shot, and it's gonna say shot two. So I'm gonna to go to forest now, and this is our other scene. See, so these, these are the backup scenes that I had uh, in case I wanted to do something different. So I'm gonna to go to forest, because this is where uh, the other scene takes place. <clears throat> This place is beautiful, by the way. Oh, super love this place. All right, loading up. And here we go. Any time now. There we go. So I've got some optimization stuff to do on this scene uh, a little bit because uh, something's going on with the... Uh, looks like the shadow maps on these trees are acting up uh, as you can see here see all the weirdness that's happening on this here uh, I, I think it has something to do with nanite or uh, some some ray tracing thing I thought it was virtual maps it's not virtual maps there's a lot of other stuff but um, my my workaround for this uh, is kind of a, a cheapo way so even the ground is really bad here um, there's a couple ways actually. Like one, you could go through and, and you can disable ray trace shadows, but then you lose shadows, which is not good. Um, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm actually gonna go to the console and in the console down, down below, I'm gonna go to r.raytracing.normalbias uh, uh, and I'm gonna set it to something like 10. And that's, that's, that's fine. I know a lot of you are like, wait, that's perfect. Why would, why would you not want to do normal bias? Well, sometimes normal bias can do other weirdo things too to the environment, but for this one, it works. Uh, normal bias a lot will uh, mess with the hair and shading on the face. So like, for example, if I go uh, r dot, um, uh, ray tracing dot uh, normal bias, I'm just gonna copy that so I can just like redo that again later copy and then change this to like zero look at the difference see the way the the shadows just play but at the same time it's just like the shadows it's it's just messing with the shadows really so yeah we'll do we'll do a normal, uh, normal bias of 10 
because that feels good. Or maybe even five. It just depends on what it does to the environment or, or if it's worth it. Because like this rock is dark, but if I go here and then I'm gonna say like five. Yeah, yeah, see that? It's, it's just, it's something weird. And I'm sure somebody watching this hopefully will be like, oh, hey, actually it's this one other thing. Seven doesn't do it. Eight gets a little bit closer. Nine is okay. Ten is ten is a magic number, and and I don't think we need to go above ten because it's, yeah, it's really not going to be noticeable, honestly. I mean, I mean, seriously, like look at this scene, look how gorgeous it is. Yeah. So uh, this scene, I literally got it uh, like right as the the forty eight hour film thing happened. Um, it was like. Uh, it was on sale in the Unreal Marketplace for like $30. And I was like, yoink. <laughs> Perfect. So, yeah, I've got to find a place uh, where this can happen, this, uh, this unfortunate event. I think right here would be a really nice place next to the pond. Like there's a little walkway here. Uh, they could be walking and then maybe she, uh, she gets impaled somewhere here. But I think it's going to, I think I'm just going to have to do some, uh, some searching. I thought about like, you know, being like near a cliff somewhere, but there's not really any cliffs in this level. Um, and so I can't really do, I mean, I could, I could actually like dig out the level if I needed to, I could, I could dig, I can be, they can walk up here like this and then she falls. Sorry, I'm going so fast. I'll slow it down for you. While I'm holding down, um, the right mouse button, I'm scrolling up and down to make it go faster and slower while I'm actually in the viewport. So pretty. Man, I just want to go there right now. I really do. Oh, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful map. Yeah, because I can't have them over here. Let's try it. Let's try over here on this other side. Here's a nice little walkway area. They can kind of go this way and go that way. Sometimes the best thing to do is just, I'm, I'm going to go on a, on a trail. Just go hike for a little bit. Okay, look, we have a drop off here on this side, off to the right. So if she gets scared and then she goes off to the right, then she could get impaled like right off here. Like maybe there's a, a thing there. And Bigfoot was hiding up there. Possibly. But those rocks here, I'll just have to move those. But those are actually instanced. So they are part of the foliage, which I can move it. But also the, the slope would make it kind of wonky for the animation the slope of the land. Okay, so here we're up a little bit higher. I mean, there's there's some opportunity here for uh for some some bad. Still have a bit of slope though cuz we're going down a hill. If 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 we can go like along the side of a hill, that would be ideal. Oh, look at this. Okay, so if we go this way, Bigfoot scares her. She goes behind here. And if we cheat the camera just right, we might be able to get away with it. Because he, like, yeah. Okay, you know what? I think this might be the spot. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead now, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and bring our characters in. So I'm going to go to characters. And we've got Young Lou and Stacy. That's who's in the scene. And, and Sasquatch, of course. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, this time bring in the SK of Young Lou. Let's put him here. Let's rotate him. And then let's go ahead and bring in Stacy. So here, and then Stacy. And there she is. Come on. Go away, editor. Thank you. Or content or yeah so so here to cheat the feet because the feet are gonna be you know like 
actually, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna have to sculpt here. So let's say I'm gonna go to uh, this mode up here. Actually, first let me save this because I like this area. I don't want to lose it. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna flatten out that little path that they're on there so that I can ensure when they're walking that their feet are flat. Whoa. So go there. I'm gonna go landscape and sculpt. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab the um, the flatten button there. And then tool strength, that's fine. Let's make that, that brush so much smaller. Like that. Yeah. And then I'm going to grab right under his foot. Just like that. And then I'll just move it over. I think actually I'm going to undo. I'm going to make it a little bit wider and then feather out that side a bit more. There we go, yeah, so feather it out. Let's make that brush a bit bigger. Let's uh, make that feather a little, there we go. That feels better. Okay, so I'm gonna go from the top here and then right from his foot and zip, just like that. Let that settle, let everything fall back into place. And as you can see, it looks pretty good. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, do, I'm gonna, I'm gonna hold down shift and click. And I'm just like dropping down the hillside on the side just a little bit more so it feels a, a little bit more natural. And let, it, let, it, let all the stuff procedurally just drop in. Yep. That feels right. And then up here, uh, it's, there's a little bit of a, a slope. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go smooth. I'm going to extend the size of this brush here. I love this. This is called Bob Rossing. At least this is what I like to call it. I like to call this Bob Rossing. So I'm going to Bob Ross this a little bit more. Cool. There. So we kept it, we kept it pretty flat. And look how smooth and beautiful that is. And, and same for the side, this hill here, I'm gonna smooth out this, oops, not too big. Actually, I'm gonna grab the sculpt, sculpt tool again. Make it a little bit smaller here. So I'm one click. And two clicks. I'm just pushing it a little bit further away. I'm basically pushing that mountain away from me a little bit. Cool, let's get low, let's look at it. Make sure it feels okay. It looks like there's still, there's, there's now a little bit of a dip in the path and that's okay um, because we have, a, we have a lot more space now. So I'm gonna go ahead back to flatten. I'm gonna make this a little bit smaller again. And then once more, just grab this and drag it along our path. And that will feel better. And then I'll, I'll smooth out this part of the path up at the top here. So now that I've got that, smooth out that path, smooth it right there. And then you won't even be able to notice it. Oh, that's, that's what I'm talking about right there. Yeah. Cool. Okay. And then later on, I can adjust trees and, and do all that fun stuff that I do. All right. So uh, let's go ahead and so sculpt a little bit right here. Just taking the side of this hill down just a tad. Ooh, maybe not that much of a tad. Or maybe so. Maybe that's okay. That's actually fine. Okay, and then right up here, since we uh, we can do this, I'm going to go ahead and create that area now uh, where the, uh, the fall happens. Whoa. Smooth this out. And then we can adjust our sun angle as well if we need to, um, you know, further extend the beauty. Yeah, yeah, that feels good. Okay, so she goes up and around the corner. He can't see her, uh, but there is an area that he can run. Uh, Bigfoot sees her from somewhere around this angle. So he's up behind that tree there. Uh, or somewhere back there, she sees him, she runs and falls, and then she gets impaled right down here. 
which is going to be so sad. Just so sad. Oops, wrong way with that. I meant to sculpt down. So now I'm just like digging a little bit, a little bit of a, 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 a cliff right here. So let's actually uh, make this wider and I'll grab it right here and then I'll, yeah, I'll just do that. So it's, it's very, very sad. That's a very big hole. We don't need a hole that big. So one click on this, one click hole dig, two click hole dig. And that looks like a pretty well, pretty, pretty good area for that to happen. So yeah, there we go. Look at that. Look how beautiful that turned out. So here he is. They go up here. She gets scared. She behind this tree. She falls right in between those. So what I would like to do now is uh, put something here. So I'm going to go ahead and just grab another tree. Uh, and I'm going to just drop it into that area. So uh, this pack is called the Nordic Conifer Biome. So I'm going to go here, go to meshes, go to trees, and then I'm going to find a nice little tree. So uh, for me, I'll just... Uh, not a fur. We don't need like a lot. That's what how does this aspen look like? No, nope, we don't need an aspen. So fur, a dead fur. I don't need a dead fur. Here's another fur. Okay, so fur is maybe too furry. Furry stump for elder fur, red pine. Let's see how that looks. Yeah, let's try this. Nope. Oh. That's static mesh, mesh foliage. I'm just grab the static mesh. There we go. Okay, so very small tree. This is enough to just cover that little spot, but I'm not really happy with the size of that. So that's a small one. So uh, red pine underscore S01. S must potentially mean small. So is there an L? Right there. That's what that means. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and grab the static mesh. And then I'm just going to drop it right up in there like this. And then I will lower it, get it into the ground so we don't see that uh, that little bottom part sticking out there. And then just like that. Just try to hide it. And then maybe like a bush. Because I like that being there. I like there being that. But then we've got a bush. So um, see backdrop, trees, scatter, rocks, ledges. I guess we just have to do this. Yeah. Okay. Uh, undergrowth. That's what this is going to be. Okay. There's a fern, clover, um, a blueberry bush. That's kind of cute. Uh, it seems a bit small though. Let's go. Uh, clover's just a ground layer. Fern. It, fern could be big. Maybe big enough here. Yeah. So let's take, let's take this fern. Yeah. It's pretty small. It looks nice. I'll just leave it. Why not? Uh, it's Unreal Engine. We can do what we want. All right. Um, those are small. Um, that's for water. So I don't really want to mix that. But you know what? Let's just grab this bush. Let's see how big it is. Oops, not the static mesh foliage. Let's grab this. Ah, it is super small. So I thought. All right. So it's not going to be super huge there. But we did have, you know what? We had that that fern from earlier that was small or that that small red pine i'll just grab a small red pine because i can i can just like use it here that's like the the, the baby fern or the ba baby one so my kids would call it the baby one cool and we'll use that and then i'll use the sun to be a bit of the uh illuminator for this thing if i need and that just blocks it a little bit more. Whoa. All right, let's get out of whatever mode that was in. Hang on. Oh, I, I must have clicked on something else. Oh, the, so anytime I click on instanced, uh, uh, instanced, uh, the, yeah, all the trees, it does that because there are just so many trees. So I lost myself. So I'm going to go ahead and click on Stacy on the right here, hit F, and that quickly gets me back to where she is at. Um, all right, so look, we have just built out the scene. I'm happy with this scene uh, so far, this area, this part of the environment. So now we're going to go ahead and do the same thing like we did previously in the other one. And we're going to go ahead and now place uh, some cameras. So go back to my movies folder. 
And in my movies folder now, I'm gonna go ahead and create um, a new level sequence. So we're not gonna to go to animation this time. We're gonna to go to cinem cinematics level sequence, ls underscore uh, forest underscore shot underscore 01. Great. And we're gonna do the same thing as we did before. We're gonna set this to 24 FPS because that's how this project goes. Um, it, um, you know what? I could, no, no, no. I was gonna say I could save some time, but I can't because of the other guys. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and create the new camera, bring that thing in here, and then call it cam underscore 01. Cool, and then I'm gonna go ahead and change this. Did I save the settings? See, I just need to memorize a 76 point or 26.73, 26.73 from last time. And then 23.76 times two, 23.76 times two. That's 47.52, 47.52. Awesome. Got that. And then going through and I'm going to go ahead and reapply all of this other stuff. So uh, this intensity here is about 0.14. Sorry, you can't see it. I'll move my big fat head. <laughs> uh, yeah, so uh, chromatic uh, aberration. I'm doing it uh, 1.4 once again. Uh, and then I'm going to do for this scene because it is a flashback uh, and, and like a, a happy memory thing. I'm actually going to bring in some bloom because I think that would just feel good. So I'll, uh, I'll enable Bloom here and I'll just pop it up a little bit. So it feels more like a memory, like a happy memory. And then I can adjust it later and bring it down if I feel like it's too much or whatever. Uh, okay, so film, let's adjust this. Okay, let's make, let me get this into an angle that feels okay. Let me look at his face, make sure his face looks okay. Oh, we got some blockiness up in that face. Oh man, is that having to do with the, uh... let's see. Nope, it's just his body. So dang, I'm gonna have to smooth out his shirt. That's okay, I can do that, I can do that. Well, you know what I'll do, I'll, because I have this animation I'll just continue forward with this and then I can replace him later. Um, so no big deal. Whatever. That's, that's more just like an annoying thing. How's hers? Is hers fine? Oh, she's blush. Oh, weird. Okay. So yeah, that's just something with iClone. I think uh, maybe the way that I exported it, not necessarily anything else. Odd. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, uh, let's go ahead and uh, move forward. And so, okay. So we got that. Let's go to uh, motion blur, enable motion blur, target FPS 24. Uh, realistically, this stuff isn't going to matter to me much until um, I go to like, this is for preview stuff. But like when I go to actually render, I don't even use this motion blur because the motion blur is being handled really by the, um, by the way that it's exported. Um, we're not going to use any lens flares because the sun is going to be behind us, but I could actually move it the other way. It might look really nice, potentially. I don't know. We'll see. I can come back to that as well. Okay, so continuing on. I realize I'm doing a lot of talking and showing, and this is good for, I'm sure, a lot of you that want to see this behind the scenes, but I think for me it's uh, it's probably taking me away from this may be a bit more than I should be thinking about. Okay, that's too much grain now. This needs to be a soft scene. Yeah, you know what? No grain on this, soft. Yes, very soft. I'm doing, uh, basically I'm blurring this out right now to make sure that there's nothing in this scene that's gonna cause any issues with rendering. Sometimes reflections, um, eye materials, Sometimes we'll have that, but I think we're good. Yes, okay. Get back into that. Let's focus on there. Cool. Bummer that they're all, uh, that the normals came in all wonky. Okay, uh, and then let's go ahead and grab him. Bring him to the scene. Let's see, actor, yes. 
and then I'll take, actually, I'll just leave the SK, that's fine. And then uh, I'm going to grab that audio as well. I shall grab her, just keep it all together. So grab her, track, actor to sequence, Stacy, um, and her animation. Let's go and bring that in. His animation, let's bring that in, which is right here. They're gonna go flying off somewhere else crazy. Uh, and then let's go ahead and extend this all the way up to the end. Ooh, look how close I was to just randomly dropping it. Next frame over, yeah, okay, that's close enough. That's about as good as it's gonna get. And I mean, realistically, this scene here is a short one. Uh, this this only lasts for, I don't know, it's like a 30 second scene or something like that. So, but a lot, a lot of stuff happens in this 30 seconds. Okay, uh, now we've got Sasquatch. Uh, Sasquatch, where are you? Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna copy her uh, location like that. And then I'm gonna find Sasquatch and I'm gonna paste that location. Hey, hey, there he is. Fast way to get him back. Uh, ooh, he's very large. This is not the scale I want. So I want 1.2 is Bigfoot's size. And I'm gonna go ahead and track accurate sequence, SK Sasquatch. All right, and let's, uh, I need to make sure this is the right version of Sasquatch. I don't believe it is. I have, I have like two versions of him. Um, one is the one that I downloaded from the marketplace, and then the other one is the one that I optimized that has more uh, in it. So I think this might actually be the other one. And I can check it like this. I'll go here, and then I'll go to his static mesh component, and it says Mythical Pack 2. Right, okay, so this is not the Sasquatch, Sasquatch that I want. So I'm going to go ahead and remove him. It's going to get angry at me, so. You're going to get angry at me? Come on, let's get angry. <laughs> I'm going to get angry. Let's do it from here. Delete. And now delete. There we go. Now that's now it likes me. All right, so yeah, we'll go back to here and let's go ahead and bring in our Sasquatch. And, and let's make sure, <laughs> even though this is my my version of Sasquatch, let's make sure he actually looks good because there might be something wonky about it, like the normals come in. No, look, his normals came in through fine. Whatever. Okay. All right, 1.2 is his scale, whoops, 1.2. Uh, that's what I've determined, his scale. Look how much bigger he is than her, but not crazy bigger than, than him. He's also standing a little bit higher off the ground, but that's okay. And uh, call him in. So here we go, SK Sasquatch, great. And bring my face back in just because just you like parties. Like my party lights over there because my <laughs> my camera can't handle the darkness. All right, so move this over here. Let's move him up the hill slightly. Get him into position. I think he's behind this tree right here. So let's grab him and move him like this. Bring him up. And he's going to be hiding on this other little path, which is so, so convenient. And if there wasn't a path right here, I would make one. Great. And then uh, because we have him, I'm going to go ahead and import his animation, which is right here. And I'll bring that animation forward so it matches everybody else's. Look at that, how beautiful it is. That's how, that's how things should be. I'm going to go ahead and save that. And then uh, go back to audio, track audio. Make sure we're at the front before we bring it in. Funny brain. All right. And then import that and we're good. Extend this out so it reaches through the whole thing and we are good to go now. So now uh, they are gonna be walking around for a little bit out of place because their scene, again, doesn't come until later and some of her stuff is uh, cut up into sections. So yeah, we're gonna have to just deal with that. So wait, did I bring her in? I didn't bring her audio or her thing in. Oh, you know what, did I give her, wait, Stacy 01 Anim? Is that, that's not, did that, was that the one? I thought I imported her stuff. Oh, I, I guess I, I guess I didn't. I did not import her animation. Okay, well, good to know. Good to know. Let's do that. I swear I did, though. I 
Yeah, I thought so, but I guess not. That's fine. And I'm temp motion. So weird. So check this out though. We have data coming in on this side, but she is not moving like she should. Weird. You know what? It might be a good time to restart the project. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'm going to say that that's okay. I'm not going to go deleting it. So I'm going to save. I haven't had to do this all day. So maybe this is, maybe that's all it is. Maybe it's just like one little weirdo thing. And sometimes that happens. And it might even fix the, the weird um, stuff happening here. Because I, I don't know what's up with that. I don't, I don't have that happen uh, very often. Is hers fixed? No, hers is still doing that thing. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, stop this one and then focus, get this restarted and get on it. Okay, no, 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 no. I got I to show this. There's that same one. I didn't do anything. I just restarted the engine and sure enough, there it is. You can see that she's actually moving. And check this out. There's no problems with the, um, with the normals. So... Yeah, it's just there was something weird. It had to re restart the engine. So, hey, you know, if, if you ever find a problem that you're like, wait, what is this? What has happened? Just restart the engine, <laughs> especially if you've been running it for as long as I have. I save all the time, but, you know, that stuff happens. So here's a fun little tip for you uh, if you're when you're setting up your shots. Uh, I feel like these sh there's still something wrong with my lighting, but, but we're just going to keep on going here. So here I am in a subsequence shot that I'm, I'm creating here, right? Um, in this one, I want it, this one to focus specifically on young Lou. So what I'm going to do to ensure that the camera is always staying on the eyes, uh, what I like to do is you go to the uh, little plus up here and go to basic, go to actor, and just drop this little thing right between the guy's eyes. And then from there, just right click and then attach to, Grab the little pin dropper and drop it right on his head and then just put head, which is right. Doop, 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 doop. I passed it, didn't I? Yes, I did. Head. <laughs> there you go. So yeah, so now, now I've got that, I can go to this here and oh, name, name that little, that, uh, that thing we just made, that actor. Just name it uh, Young Lou Focus. Young Lou underscore focus. Right. That way we can go over here back to this camera in camera one, and then we'll go to the focus method. Move this, sorry. On the right hand side in the details panel, uh, under focus, we're gonna change this manual to tracking, and then here, just type in focus. And then there's Young Lu. So now it'll always stay on him no matter how far we get away from him, and because this camera is a dedicated shot, uh, we can stay Perfect, no matter how close or how far we get from Lou's face. See, so it's, it's just a really handy way to just not think about it and go. So yes, sometimes, sometimes of course, there are situations where you wanna do like rack focus and all of that sort of stuff. But again, in this situation, I'm, I'm not doing any rack focusing. I'm just, I'm just going, so yeah. One, oh, five a.m. I go crazy now. I feel crazy. <laughs> Have all night for edit and tomorrow till seven. But I'm not done. I'm tired and I, uh, I'm just, uh, I'm just waiting for this animation to, to bake to an FK rig so I can make like one or two little offsets for the animation. Stacy is walking uphill and I need her to look down a little bit at younger Lou. So I'm baking the animation 
to an FK rig so I can do an additive to the head position to correct the look position. <sighs> this is such an important part. I, I haven't even gotten down to the, like the main part of the story yet where like, you know, it's, it's uh, older Lou and he's, uh, he's talking to Bigfoot who's in a cage. I haven't even started on that scene yet. I felt like this scene here, like it's got to, it's, it has to work. This has to grab you. You know, like you, you have to feel that connection. You have to feel love. And, and I, and I think, I think I got it. I think, I think like I can feel this and, and I don't know if it's just because I'm tired or, or what, but I mean, I, I've seen it like a billion times. And it, it feels right. I cannot believe I've been in this office for this long. Like I, I, I went to the restroom and then I came back in and I legitimately felt like I was like in, in this is where I live now. <laughs> like, like this is my apartment now, I guess this is. <sighs> and so like, it doesn't feel like 1 a.m which is good. I'm not, I'm not super delirious. I was delirious earlier before my nap. Really thankful I took a nap. But yeah. Ah, looks like the, uh, the thing is going to be finished. I'll show you what this looks like if I can turn this. Yeah. So here, move all these bottles. It's all this water. I'm staying hydrated, super hydrated. Yeah. So I'll move this too. So you can see she's in the scene here looking down and I feel like her head's a little bit too tilted as well. So, hey, there we go. So now do some offsets. I'll show you what this looks like from my angle. So see, he's like way over there and her eye, her head is just like, wow, almost exorcist. <laughs> Ooh, I'm so tired. All right, keep going. All right. It's uh, man. It's 5.23 a.m. Sunday, the day that this, uh, this, this, this challenge is over. Um, I am having a heck of a time trying to fix this forest map that I have. Uh, I got some beautiful shots in there, but the problem is every time I'm rendering, the map itself is like flickering. Uh, and so I have tried many things to try to solve whatever this problem is, and uh, I, I, I just can't solve it. So what I've decided to do, rather than um, bang my head against the desk and pray for answers on Google, <laughs> uh, I'm going to render what looks the best, which isn't quite up to standard with what it was that I wanted to do. Um, it's kind of surprising. Like I've never run into this issue and I've done a lot of stuff, but th that's the way this goes sometimes. Um, and it, and it might be that like on another day when I'm not sleep deprived, I'll just be like, Oh wait, that was that one tick box that I, I didn't check. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to do my best to just not let this get to me because if I don't finish this scene, it's just going to slow me down. That, I mean, this is, we're still in the forest, right? It's just that, that connection that needs to be the focus, the connection between Stacy and young Lou. And so as long as that comes across, I think, I think um, it's, it's forgivable. It's not, it's not the best, but you know what? Make the rest shine. And, and maybe I'll just throw another effect on top to make it, uh, make it work enough. Cause right now that's what I need. I need it to work enough. Man, I'm rendering it. I'm still seeing it. But maybe nobody else will see it. Okay, okay, okay. I'll get past it. The moment of glory has arrived. It's being uploaded to 48hourfilm.com on time. It is currently, what time is it? 7.12 p.m. on Sunday. 7.30 is the deadline. So, yes. I have done it. Ah, 
You know what I'm gonna do to celebrate? First, I'm gonna pee, because I've had so much water. I have stayed hydrated. My workspace is still clean. I'm happy about that. Uh, but no, tonight, I, I'm going to celebrate, celebrate by sleeping. That's it. I need sleep. I am so tired. Here it is, 89%. I'm still uploading this thing. And when that is done, that's a wrap for me. Unless I have to like put some extra stuff in, which I don't think I do. There we go, 97%, 98%, 99%, finalizing. Doing some last things. Success! I have completed the 48 hour film challenge. Uh, 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 I'm going to bed. And that my friends is my process of creation. Uh, all two hours and something of it. I, I didn't realize I was gonna shoot a feature length documentary behind the scenes while shooting a 48 hour short film. So yeah, I hope this helps you in some way. Um, it was a lot of fun for me to make and, and to, to share because, you know, again, like I want to help uh, creators uh, tell stories in, in a whole new way. And, and I really truly believe that this technology here, this pipeline is, is the way to go, uh, especially for indie creators. You saw that I'd worked on my own, you know, other than having like Will come in and record some lines and, and uh, my wife and Will like, you know, helped me a little bit with the script because, you know, it, it's a lot. Um, but I, I made this on my own. And if I can do this, so can you. Like I've really, I've only been doing this since about 2019, 2020. Unreal Engine, I had never even touched it until the pandemic. So yeah, not to mention things are getting a lot easier now. Like when I first started out, everything was crashing, everything was hard, it was, yeah, it was a lot harder. So anyway, I hope this gives you some inspiration to at least give this a try if you've never tried this before because it is, it's just so much fun. And you don't need a crazy high-end motion capture suit. You don't need to have mocap gloves or any of this stuff. Really, all you need to do is download Unreal Engine. It's free. You can do cool stuff in there. A lot of the assets that I bought, the environments and all of that, they're like, most of them are for free, but most of them you can buy for like $30 a lot of them cheaper than that even. So yeah, what are you waiting for? Anyway, I sound like a commercial again. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. I cannot wait for the screening on Friday. Yes, and I hope I win. Wish me luck. If I, if I win this here in Oklahoma City, then I get to go to Filmapalooza. And if I do well at Filmapalooza, I get to go to Cannes. And that means great things, great things. So anyway, thank you so much. For, so thank you so much for watching. My name is Corey Williams from Daydream Studios. I'll see you in the next one, whenever that is. Later.